Call me boring, but out of everything Splatoon updates have to offer, the things I look forward to honestly the most are the returning maps and seeing how they'll be adapted. Even if Splatoon 3 doesn't do it right, almost at all, I'm still very eager to see which stages will come back, along with how they'll be portrayed. And with the sizzle? season? Is that its name? Merely weeks away, which is almost certainly giving us a returning Splatoon 1 classic, that anticipation is at an all-time high. That's why I decided to collab with competitive Splatoon player Prochara to create concept reworks of what we consider to be the five most wanted maps to return in Splatoon 3. Hi, I'm Chara, a competitive Splatoon player and content creator, and you might have seen me from the maps video I did a while back with my pedal squid. So today, I wanted to apply that concept to be able to rework other maps to be put into Splatoon 3. First, we'll go over the two fan-favorite Splatoon 2 maps that we'd like to see included, the Reef and Snapper Canal. Realistically, considering the track record with Splatoon 2 stages and, uh, Manta, the reworks might not be great. So instead, we're gonna go with some stuff that would be a bit more optimal and stuff we'd like to see in a perfect world, not what we think's gonna happen. We'll start off with the Reef, often regarded as the best stage in the entirety of Splatoon, so most changes will just be small tweaks. General changes are the inclusion of defensive sponges here and here, and extensions to the high grounds here and here to make defending easier. And that's literally it. There's definitely a reason people consider this to be the best designed map in all of Splatoon, as it gives so much freedom and its flaws in most modes are trivial at worst. While speaking of the modes, let's look at their specific changes. Tower only had a tiny path change, so it didn't go as far at the very end of the route, but it's incredibly minor, and clams and zones had pretty much no changes. Rainmaker, though, was a little bit troubling. Rainmaker Reef had a few problems. It used a lot of the good spawn area to be a part where the enemies could push into, which made spawn locks a bit awkward. The routes converged at a very early point, and both were very awkward to push on, and it was just a constant uphill fight. So, my idea in our version is to use the far left side of your spawn, an area that's usually just an annoying stalling spot, to be expanded. Not only does the extended high ground allow for defenders to defend easier, but it also allows for a third pushing path for attackers, where this wall is now inkable, requiring a risky jump over the water. As seen in a few of our other reworks before, this stage will also include three checkpoints, since otherwise one of the main paths just won't have one, and you need a checkpoint by that lower path, so that way if you'd say, stop a push on the new route, you could more easily converge into pushing on that left side. We believe that these changes would be as close to perfect as a Splatoon stage could be in every single mode. I genuinely think in Rainmaker, the standard should be three checkpoints, sometimes two, and very rarely one. You would think that was the case with the devs' obsession with the number three, but I guess their creative vision applies to everything but map design. Like seriously, three checkpoints could fix so many issues with Rainmaker in this game. Next up is Snapper Canal. This is a stage that was really just hurt from being in Splatoon 2. A lot of the global range specials could be incredibly obnoxious with how large and safe it was, so it already gets a lot better just by being moved into Splatoon 3. We decided to use the Rainmaker and Clamblet spawn as a base for all modes, which would work better with the new spawn system. Similar to the Reef, there aren't too many differences. The only general changes here are these two defensive sponges to make dropping not as committal, and both of these ink rails would be amazing to have in all modes. In splat zones, the entire zone sucked in Splatoon 2, since this area was lowered and awkward to jump out of, and the zone was just small in general. Thankfully, the squid roll actually fixes the first issue. And the zone will be extended just slightly, since it was a little bit easy to cap, and stuff like Tri Strikes or Booyah Bomb could be a bit of a problem for it in this game. Rainmaker here was already great, so in order to keep its three main routes, we once again opted for a tri-checkpoint system. Easy peasy. And just like the reef, the clam basket would be the exact same place. Lemon squeezy. Tower control is where all the spicy changes are. Yeah, this was definitely not the map shining mode. Not only did the tower go away from spawn and was awkward to defend due to its placement, but it also went over water. One of the worst sins a TC route can ever commit. The new route will be similar, but will now stretch out further to the left, avoiding the water and instead going near the defender high ground, which will have a few more options to be able to contest. Since the tower around the second checkpoint was very easy to stall and keep on that bottom left corner of the map, as it forced defenders to go from low ground outside of very long range weapons, making it incredibly annoying. I personally really hope Snapper and the Reef both come back, as they're probably some of my favorite maps in the entire series. Even if they reported one-to-one -one with no changes, they'd still probably be the 
best maps in the game, let's be real. Now, here's the fun part we all know you're really here for. Reworking the remaining Splatoon 1 stages that have yet to return. Again, we're gonna do our best to rework them to work well in this game, not what the Splatoon devs are likely to do. This also means maintaining the stage's identity as much as possible, as that's something basically all of the Splatoon 1 ports in this game really fail at, even including the quote-unquote good ones like Museum. First up is Urshin. It's really weird we haven't gotten this stage back, considering it's probably the most well-known one, given it was in Mario Kart 8 and that thing sold, uh, yeah. <laughs> No, but seriously. Not to mention it was meant to be the series' flagship map and still isn't playable on the Switch, even to this day. Well, minus Mario Kart, of course. But that doesn't count. Let's take a look at the general changes. First of all, I really wanted to revert the tree placements in mid, now replaced with pillars, to the rightful spots back at spawn. Not only were the trees very awkward to fight around and made it feel very claustrophobic, but the spawn tree was just iconic, man, come on. Only real ones remember painting the tree for luck. Oh yeah, you can't ink trees anymore in Splatoon 3. Why? Next, the entry point to mid has been greatly simplified to make it less cluttered and cramped, with the bumper moved here and a few defensive sponges added, mostly to allow defenders an easier route back to spawn. The biggest change probably was this new little tunnel out of spawn accessible by this grading platform to give defenders a much-needed movement option, along with this new ink rail to allow poking with bombs. This is particularly helpful in modes like Tower Control, Rainmaker, and Clan Blitz being added to it, where the attackers push much further in and it becomes a little bit awkward. This ramp was also simplified since I always found it very awkward and claustrophobic, and now being wider makes it much faster and easier to reach the flank from the low ground. In Tower Control, this block will return from Splatoon 1, allowing it to be a giant two-way flank. A ramp will be added here to add a few movement options, and the vertical grading will disappear to make room for the revamped tower path, which will now go further down rather than up. And that was a very painful area in the first game, I'll tell you. Since we've expanded the defending options in the spawn area, attackers getting up here will no longer cause the defenders to have to fight uphill to remove people from there at the latter half of the tower checkpoint, and have an even chance of defending. In Clan Blitz, the basket will be right here, with the tower control flank block still intact. This gives three different routes to try and score, one quick but risky one, and two flanks that take a bit longer. Rainmaker, as usual, has the most terrain changes, but they actually aren't that extreme on this map. We allowed this new high ground to be a push route, since similar to tower control, the new options allow to be great for attackers and defenders, and prevents Rainmaker from simplifying into one route like it did in Splatoon 1. In this case, only one checkpoint is needed still, because the two initial paths merge at the halfway point. All in all, I think these changes would be great for this map. Though we can't know for sure how the Splatoon devs will actually treat it, I honestly have a good feeling it'll be the best and most faithful Splatoon 1 port of them all. Considering its layout is already pretty simple, and there isn't much you can really do to ruin it besides taking away the left flank, but then I feel it's so baked into the map's design, kind of like Museum's flank, that I just don't see them removing it. Maybe just wishful thinking. Only time will tell. Next up will be Bluefin Depot. Bluefin was a stage with not only an interesting gimmick, but also a really cool setting being an abandoned mining facility. Bluefin really struggled for being incredibly long range favored in the middle, but extremely cramped and short range favored in the spawn area and plat regions, which made it feel awkward regardless of the range value you're using. Out of all our reworks so far, this one received the most amount of changes, though of course I still tried my hardest to keep its identity intact as much as possible. Mid is mostly the same, however the middle bridge that connects them will be there in all modes as well as the one-way ramps. The uninkable tapered low ground was also extended a bit to be a safety net, so if you drop down there it'd still be punishing since you couldn't move as much, but you know, you wouldn't accidentally die there. To make it easier to approach, an aggressive ink rail was added to the right, and to make it easier to leave mid, the entirety of the low ground was raised just a bit to make the walls to climb out slightly less tall. All these changes helped make the area feel much better and less restrictive. Moving out of mid though is where we'll see the more extreme changes. The entire plat area was stretched backward just slightly to make it a little less claustrophobic, and allowed the bits of cover there to be a little bit more spread out. 
kind of like what happened in the area behind the bunker on Manta Maria. Two much needed defending sponges were also added, since on the original map, the only way you could go backward on most modes is walking up a giant graded path on the far left. Not exactly ideal. Speaking of that grading platform, it was a bit of a nightmare to use for both attackers and defenders, since it was so long with only a single, tiny block to use as cover. We gave it a bit of inkable ground halfway up to make it less vulnerable, along with this whole area being widened to make it easier to contest for defenders, which effectively shortens the graded path. Last but not least, the whole spawning area was widened with an extension to the left, and the stairs were extended under the grating to prevent poor little Timmy from falling his first time playing. Yeah, that's a lot of base changes. And we still have the ranked modes to look at. Bluefin Depot Zones was very unique in Splatoon 1, as the zone would only be on one side, therefore being asymmetrical. While this did have some disadvantages due to right side peeking, it also allowed one side of the map to be a very clear flank, and gave the map a unique identity. For this rework, we have two variations. For the main variation, the middle platform we have will be present in zones, and the zone will be placed there, removing any asymmetricality and keeping both sides equally useful, allowing you to go all the way around if you want, and being the more balanced of the two. An alternative, though, would be to mirror the map like this, more akin to Salt Spray Rig and Skipper Pavilion. This would allow you to keep the zone on one side with this whole area acting as a flank, without it being as unbalanced in some ways to push in as it was in Splatoon 1, though slightly still favoring one side due to right side peaking. On to tower control. The tower path is largely the same, except it's been adjusted to no longer go over water and doesn't go as deep into enemy territory. The clan basket would be about right here, though the mode would probably just be a little weird in the map in general. And although it's a tad awkward, in order to keep the three route intact, Rainmaker will once again have triple checkpoints, and with the improvements to the higher areas, this mode will feel much better. You know you want to add triple checkpoints, Nintendo. In general, this mode also benefits from the extended plat, as the routes are a bit faster and much easier to move on, whereas in Splatoon 1 you had like running up a bunch of graded surfaces, or climbing up of two inkable blocks on an uninkable block, or climbing a one-way wall onto a graded surface. These routes are still a bit awkward, but so much more easy to traverse and defend. Last but not least is Salt Spray Rig, an absolute nightmare to rework. You all know the story. This map is notoriously known for- Hey, so Rig's kind of a nightmare. Yeah, it's very fun, but the whole stalling Rainmaker 100 point thing, terrible spawn area, there's just so much to adjust here, we might have to cover this on my channel. Yeah, fair enough, I agree. This video is already running really long anyway, so... You. Yes, you, the viewer. If you want to see how we tackled the most notorious map in all of Splatoon, Salt Spray Rig, along with an analysis of how it could be adapted into a Salmon Run stage, check out Prochar's video covering all of that. And subscribe to him, but honestly, anyone subscribed to me is probably sub to him anyway, so... All I can say is thanks for joining me, and I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it, and be sure to subscribe to Bipedal Squid to see more interesting content.